faceplate compasses, like these two British Army issue ones, silver here, sun to there, are ridiculously simple devices, really. They're called a base plate compass because there's this base plate that is a key component of the way the thing works and composes most of the structure. There are lots of ways these can be laid out, but these in practice are always um, clear place bases, usually with a magnifier, a ruler on one side, and scales that correspond to various types of maps over here. There'll be other information if they have are eliminated, they're radioactive. We'll talk about that later, though. The other component of the node is the capsule, just like you might be used to otherwise, which spins to correspond to directions and is graduated usually, but not always, in degrees and uh, mills. And, of course, the needle itself, which is floats inside the capsule. These are oil damp and compasses, so therefore there is a fluid inside them. If you see bubbles, usually they can survive a little bit of that, but uh, this one does not have any, thank thankfully. Nor does the other one, so I can't demonstrate that. But you need to make sure the bubbles don't get on the bearings or at the end of the needle, because then they can cause deviations in the reading. If it happens, you just shake it, the bubble will go away or turn into lots of little bubbles and it doesn't matter. This will happen if you climb mountains with your compasses and stuff. Using these is ridiculously simple. We'll start with plotting. And unfortunately to start with plotting, that way by far is to simply draw lines across the map that correspond to the declination mark for magnetic north. On US NATO maps, you're going to have magnetic north listed and it's to scale. This one is somewhere in the northeastern US, I guess, so that it's got a fairly significant deviation. In lots of other places, it's very low. But here, what you do is you simply take your pencil, you draw a line there, and then since it's not a grid, you can draw the lines by simply lining up the ruler on the other side of the line, drawing another one over there. We're going to ignore that, though, and pretend that magnetic north is along the grid north for these demonstrations to make it easy for everybody to understand. So let's say you want to run from that point to that point. You can pick any straight line, because you notice the compass has several straight lines, but the edge is often the best, because you can see. So if you want to plot it from there to that hilltop, you lay the, comp the, the, bait, the side of the base plate again along that line, and you can look right down the top of it and get very precisely lined up. Then you twist the capsule to line up with the north lines. As I said here, we're going to go ahead and use the grid north and pretend everything's that that's the same as uh, magnetic north. You would, of course, line up with magnetic north lines or adjust for declination in other ways if you want to. Some of them even have a little adjustment screw, but that's troublesome if you're moving to different regions of the world. Also notice that there are these, um, there are numerous lines in the middle of the capsule. That is so you can make it easier to align with line, the north lines on the map. In any case, that is all there is to plotting a course on a map. Now you're set up and ready to go. All you do to actually travel with a compass like this is you hold it so that the north red needle lines up with all the lines and the arrow for the north side and the capsule. And you make sure that this, the direction of travel arrow, there is always sort of this little arrow up here at the top, but regardless, the base of the compass is facing away from you. Usually, you can hold it something like this. If you hold it up against your gut, let's say that's your, your stomach, that's called the center hold method. It's a nice way to keep your body aligned correctly. However, it does not work if you're carrying rifles, ammunition, magazines, radios. It'll make the compass deviate. So holding it like this, but away from your body, is the best way to do it. This gives you a basic understanding of where, which way you're going. You can look down the line there, kind of sight your eyeball up, and um, 
get an impression of where you're going, which is good enough for most navigation purposes. For precise navigation, what you do is you look at the compass, you hold the compass up to just below eye level. And what you'll end up with is a target in the distance. And you can use the lines, the direction of travel line, or if you're having problems, even the edge of the compass to line up precisely to that point and you look over the top look down into the capsule to, s to make sure everything's lined up. Now since we're pointing the camera in the wrong direction the compass won't work but what will happen you need to make sure that the compass lines up is parallel the needle is parallel to the black and red lines inside the capsule. Notice for example actually right here is a perfectly good example of that. The needle the, the lines Rather, the needle isn't perfectly aligned with the lines. It's perfectly parallel to them. That works even if there's significant offsets. Now, you can also use the same procedure, this sighting over the top of it, to figure out the, the angle to something else. So, we'll reset the compass to zero. <clears throat> and you're trying to align to an arbitrary point in the distance. We'll just, just pretend that up there is where you're aligning to. So you look, you sight across the top of the compass so you can see the direction of travel arrow and you can see down to the capsule. And mostly that you can see the north, the needle. You line it up, you hold it with one hand, and the, the, the more pointing at the thing you can get, the better, but um, obviously you need to be able to see into the capsule precisely too. Then you turn the capsule till it aligns with the needle, which isn't going to work here, but I'll, so I'll demonstrate it flat. You turn the capsule until it lines up with the needle. Simple. Now you have both a pre-plotted location. So if, for example, you want to hike to that next, that mountaintop over there, you can simply then travel with the compass like this and go, aha, I will walk that direction and walk away. Or you can read off the location very simply and always here by referring to the number that corresponds to the little tick there. So that's, these are in mills, so that's between 12 and 14 somewhere. The middle unlabeled tick is 1300 mills, and then there's a middle, on, an even smaller quarter unlabeled tick, 1250 mills. Now, for any mechanical measuring device like this, you can also read half ticks. So if the compass was adjusted to this point, you would read that as 1275. You can do this for any measurement, anything that gives you ticks. But go, turning it back to what we saw, you place it on the map. What you're going to do is you have to have a known starting point, or at least an estimated one. And you line up one edge of the compass against that starting point. And you may want to use something to lock it to that thing, which I'm not doing here. So I'm using my finger a little bit, like a stick or the point of a pencil. Because you're going to rotate around that point until the capsule, the lines in the capsule, are lined up with the magnetic north. Again, we're going to use the, um, the grid lines here to make it simple and easy to see. But you, rotate, you don't rotate the capsule. You just rotate the whole compass. And then you read off your bearing to the target along the side. And if you track down the right direction, you can see that we're up at the top of Lemon Hill right now.